The notion uh, that Neanderthals cannot possibly have been involved in the uh, behavioral innovations that appear in the archaeological records of Europe between 100,000 and 40,000 years ago goes back to Valois's uh, 1950s presapience hypothesis. Under the phrenological assumption that intelligence can be inferred from the size and shape of the bumps in people's heads, recent formulations of the hypothesis advocate that modern humans made the symbolic artifacts and advanced technology seen in the later middle and earliest upper Paleolithic of Europe. Since the collapse of the putative or Ignatian chateau Brunnen interstratifications at Côte de Fée, Le Piage and uh, Roc de Combe, this argument has mainly, mainly rested on one of two empirical propositions. One is that the modern human-made or Ignatian is the first true evidence of behavioral modernity and arrived in Europe much earlier than hitherto thought. The other is that the preceding so-called transitional techno-complexes, namely the Chateau Brunnen and the Illusion, also reflect behavioral modernity, but their makers were modern human, not Neanderthal. Over the last few years, support for these claims has come from the presence of modern human fossils at Kent Skeven prior to 41.5 Ka, association of modern human fossils with the, with the Eleusian at Grotta del Cavallo since 45 Ka, the dating of the Aurignacian to as early as 43.5 Ka at Geisen Klusterle and Willendorf II, the dating of the Aurignacian's Middle Eastern source, the Ahmarian, to as early as 46.49 Ka at Kabara, the association of the Ahmarian's predecessor, the Emirian or IUP, with modern humans prior to 46 Ka at Xarakil, and the direct dating to 55 Ka of a modern human cranium from Manot Cave. If true, such findings would counter the 36.5 radiocarbon or 41.5 Ka calendar horizon for the time of contact in Europe that, based on the primacy of stratigraphy principle, we proposed 20 years ago. However, where the chronology of the Akhmarian and the Central European uh, origination is concerned, we recently showed elsewhere that errors of assemblage definition, sample association and stratigraphic interpretation underpin these claims. Not disputing that the fossils from Kenskevan, Cavallo, Xarakil and Manot are modern, even though the doubt is legitimate for some, we argue here that similar problems plague their dating. At Kent's Cavern, the earliest of the dates obtained for the deposit overlying the level whence the fossil reportedly comes does not establish its minimum age. As this is a torrential deposit, the result of stratigraphic significance is the youngest, which tells us that the accumulation occurred no earlier and possibly much later than 31.5 Ka. Therefore, the only real age constraint for the fossil is the maximum of 35 Ka provided by samples from the underlying levels. This assumes the stratigraphic integrity of the sequence, but, but stone tool refits that cut across major stratigraphic boundaries challenge the assumption, and the poor quality of the excavation work further questions the notion that the fossil can be dated by association. At Grotta del Cavallo, the argument is that two deciduous teeth hitherto thought to be Neanderthal are a. modern and b. genuinely associated with the Lutzian lithics and ornamental shells directly dated to 43-44 Ka. This argument rests on the integrity of the sequence, supported by a photo of the site's stratification. However, rather than being representative of the 1963-64 excavation trench, this cross-section only concerns its northwest corner, where, in the excavator's own words, the most complete and most intact stratigraphic series could be observed. Elsewhere, namely along the opposite wall, the sequence was affected by a major disturbance feature traversing it all the way down to the Mousterian. 
Such post-depositional disturbance explains the numerous anomalies apparent in the composition of the artifact assemblages, namely dentalium, columbella, and cyclope shell ornaments reported in 1963 from Mysterium layer F. Dufu bladeds and carinated scrapers in Eleusian layer E. Eleusian layer Eleunids in layer D, initially ascribed to the Eleusian but shown to be Aurignacian by Patricia Joya's 1980 study of the layers lithics. Early epigravetian shoulder points and directly dated cyclopic ornament docu documenting occupation of the site during the last glacial maximum, a time interval supposedly not represented in the sequence. The two supposedly Eleusian teeth from Cavallo come from this 1963-64 trench. Therefore, neither the stone tools nor the dated samples found alongside can be used to, to date them by association. These fossils provide no support for modern human presence in Europe 45 Ka, and whether they are modern or Neanderthal is, no is of no relevance for the question of who made the Eleusian. Based on new dates for Xarakil, Bosch et al. have placed 43 Ka, the sites of Achmarian, and the now lost fossil from level 16, Egbert. The preceding IUP would have ended 45 Ka, the date for level 22, thereby setting a minimum age for the fragmentary maxilla from level 25, Etherruda. In fact, these results span the 34, 7 to 44 Ka interval and do so in no internal stratigraphic order. <coughs> Bosch et al.'s study used shellfish samples, but the previous study using ornamental mollusk shell placed the same boundaries several millennia later. Contamination issues cannot explain the contradiction, and time lags between death of organism, the dated event, and human use of the shell, the archaeological event of interest, would work toward making the ornamental shells samples older, not younger, than the ele elementary ones. The real problem at Xarakil concerns the validity of the stratigraphic labels used in the 1937-38 and 1947-48 excavations once the dated samples come. Williams and Bergman's 2010 paleo study of the stone tool assemblages from the upper part of the sequence concluded that the excavator's field units cut across the site's real stratigraphy. So you can see their table of correspondence and how that translates in terms of the stratigraphy on the right. <coughs> Williams and Bergman reconstruct a sequence featuring a significant dip to the south, while the excavator's nodes show broadly horizontal field unit boundaries. Since there is no reason to think that a similar dip did not characterize the stratification further down in the sequence, it comes as no surprise that each of the IUP to Achmarian levels 15 to 24 contain a mixture of material from both periods. This is borne out by the dates and corroborated by the presence uniquely at Zarakil of Luvawa cores and debitage products in the Achmarian and of uh, Elwad points in the IUP. In this context, uh, no Bayesian modeling based on strati stratigraphic depth is possible, and the only conclusion these dating projects uh, warrant is that regardless of the samples assigned cultural stratigraphic provenience, no ornamental use of the shells of marine gastropods is documented at Xarakil before 41.5 Ka. A corollary is that the abundant ornamental shell collection from the IUP levels is likely to be made up mostly, if not entirely, of material of actual Ahmarian age. The same must therefore apply to IUP levels GHI of the southern Turkish site of Uchazla, which feature a similar spread of charcoal dates. The 55 Ka age assigned to the modern human cranium from Manot Cave derives from the UTH dating of its calcite patina. However, the fossil is a surface find, 
and the radiometric results obtained for the under underlying archaeological deposits indicate that anything on the site's surface must be younger than 19 Ka. For the uranium thorium age not to be stratigraphically impossible, the cranium would have to derive from subsurface animal burrowing. However, no sediment remnants existed between the calcite and the bone surface. Put another way, the fossil was never buried. The uranium thorium age must therefore be erroneous, and the cause likely resides in how the correction factor used to account for detrital contamination was calculated. The Manot study used a 1.75 plus or minus 0.15 correction, which is the average and standard error of a number of measurements made on several of the case other speleothemes. However, because the trital contamination can vary at intracite and even intrasample level, the proper descriptor of the dispersion of values around the average is standard deviation, and the corresponding uncertainty has to be propagated to the calculation of the date. Doing this, we obtain for the monarch craniums calcite patina uranium thorium age a 95% probability interval of 0 to 100 Ka. In all likelihood, the reason why the cranium looks surprisingly modern is that it is very modern indeed. This review suggests that the lesson from the early 21st century weeding of the fossil record does not seem to have been learned. That lesson is that indirect dating of important artifacts or human remains from old excavations by putative stratigraphic association is at best a waste of time and resources. Naturally, this also applies to modern excavations of sites where post-depositional processes disturbed the original stratigraphic configuration beyond recognition. Where the authorship of the proto warignesian is concerned, it is apparent that, when considering only fossils and archaeological contexts whose dating is secure, the question simply cannot be answered, and is therefore devoid of scientific interest. It made sense in the days when Neanderthals and moderns were constructed as mutually exclusive biological, behavioral and cultural categories, but becomes somewhat of nonsense once the reality of admixture is fully assimilated. This is because the millennial resolution of dating methods is one order of magnitude poorer than the generational precision of the analysis required to address authorship in a contact situation. In addition, the authorship question subsumes the notion that our present day Neanderthal and modern categories had operational equivalents in the world of 40 to 50,000 years ago. Simply considering the legal problems involved in defining Aboriginal, First Nations or Sami people with mixed ancestry <coughs> suffices to make it clear that at the time of contact, any boundaries that may have existed between self-defined groups of people must have been culture rather than biology based. The Oase people are directly dated to the time range of the proto war Ignatian and corroborating the paleontological evidence to that effect published by those who found, excavated and studied the fossils, genetics has now established that these people had Neanderthal grand or great-grandparents. If back then ethnicity existed and Australian or Canadian law applied, these Oase people could have claimed the status of Neanderthal, even though, racially speaking, they are early modern. A final corollary of this review is that no modern human fossils and no symbolic artifacts are securely dated in Europe or the Near East prior uh, to 41.5 Ka. The emergence of the Neanderthal associated symbolic Chateau Brunion culture thus predates by at least three millennia any real evidence for modern humans in Europe or at, or at its gates. Rather than weakened, the notion that the Chateau Brunion is an independent Neanderthal development is strongly supported by this recent evidence. Thank you. That's a great talk. Thank you very much. Um, questions? Yes, over there in the corner. I think the microphone, if you can just wait a second for the microphone. What?
my name is Israel Herskovich. I published the Skal on Karof Menot. And I would like to tell him one thing. First of all, you presented Please use the microphone. First of all, you presented the dating of Menot in a very biased way, I would say. And I would like to say and uh, I take the responsibility to distribute to all of the all of the people over here uh, a letter that we uh, submitted to Nature about the dating. We got the letter and we wrote a detailed reply about the dating of uh, Manot's car. And I can assure you that the dating of Manot's car is very extremely accurate. We used uh, three different methods, basically, not the way it was presented here, but basically we used uh, three different methods uh, to calculate what we call the correction factor and in order to overcome many problems regarding the dating of the skull, and we did it over and over, over and over again, and there is a lot of new data that we can bring, and uh, yeah, okay. No, I just want to make a comment. Oh, well. I just want to make a comment that, <laughs> and say that uh, regardless of what, what, what has been said about the dating of an old car, I can assure you that it's 55,000 years old star. That's all. Thank you. Um, Am I supposed to answer? Uh, well, I think it was just I think it was just a comment. So oh, okay. I mean, please. I mean, if you have a response, then yeah. No, no. I, I mean, I, I think the challenge at Manot is to explain how um, a fifty-five thousand-year-old uh, cranium can be sitting uh, on the floor of a cave whose deposit is sealed by a flowstone uh, dated by dated to nineteen thousand years ago, uh, under which a very coherent sequence of results. Uh, establishes the deposition of the deposits themselves uh, between uh, 40 something and, 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 and 30,000. So where does this uh, 55,000 year old skull come from is the question that needs to be answered. I, and I stand by the uh, criticism concerning the calculation of the correction factor. Thank you. Uh, Jerome, um, uh, a, br a brief one. Um, in the list of sites that you, you presented uh, as false evidence for uh, Modern humans in uh, Western Eurasia before, say, 42, 43, so, so you listed billions of. I, yes. I did not catch your uh, the reason why you reject this. Uh, well, I, it's explained in my 2013 paper, but I can briefly summarize. It's very simply put um, at Villendorf, the level that was uh, published, uh, the argument for, for the organization dating uh, uh, so far back in time concerns the uh, uh, refit made between one item from the new excavations and uh, stuff from the old excavations. Uh, this refit uh, proves that uh, the uh, excavators had been separated by one, 100 years uh, worked in pretty much the same area, uh, but in terms of uh, defining the assemblage are meaningless because um, you can have that little bladelet mounted on that core uh, in sites in Africa dated two million years ago, uh, or in uh, sites in the Bronze Age uh, dated to uh, uh, three thousand years ago, so that, that does not prove the origination-ness of the assemblage excavated in the recent excavations. Moreover, if you look at the uh, the, uh, the spatial distribution of the new radiocarbon results of Willendorf II, you will see that towards the northern end of the trench, two levels dated at 38, 39 uncalibrated and at 34 uncalibrated, uh, which are well separated in the area of the Philip Nick's new excavations, come in direct contact towards the uh, trench uh, opened by Paul Azitz already uh, back in the 1990s. And, it is, uh, uh, and this area was excavated as a single level uh, uh, in the old excavations where all the organization artifacts come from. So uh, Philip's uh, hypothesis is that his uh, refit, one refit, represents origination across the entire uh, site. My hypothesis is that the origination artifacts from the old excavations come from the area towards uh, uh, Pohazet's Trench, where they, you have these 34,000 uncalibrated very common dates, which fit 
the nature of the uh, artifacts themselves. Okay, but uh, your hypothesis is not just as hypothetical than this hypothesis. No, no, my, it is not because uh, everywhere around Willendorf, those artifacts date to no, no, no older than 34,000. So again, the challenge here is to explain for those who believe in, 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 in that uh, study, how come you have at Willendorf exactly the same thing that you find 20 kilometers away 7,000 years before? I mean, that's uh, the explanation I'm, I've been uh, waiting to hear and, and, and hasn't been forthcoming, to my knowledge. Can I just say one sentence? Just a One sentence. Just to say, you gave a similarly classic candidate against Canada. Thank you. I'm sure that we'll have lots of discussions over lunch. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>